All right, all right, all right. Advanced Math 8, here we go. We've got Lesson 4.1.4. We're going to do this one in two days. So this is called Least Squares Regression Line. All right, so uh, today we've got a table of data over here. And this shows one season of the El Toro professional basketball team. All right, so they've got all these team members. They have how many minutes that they played and then how many points that they scored during the season in those minutes that they're playing. We got a little bit of a problem. Uh, Antonio Kusuk was inadvertently left off the list. Oh no. So we know that Antonio Kusuk played uh, 2,103 minutes and we would like to predict how many points he scored during the season. So this should be very familiar since we've done this for three lessons in a, in a row where we draw that line of best fit, we make an equation of that line of best fit, and then we can plug in the minutes to predict how many points that he would have scored. Now this is going to be a little bit different than most of the notes that I've done for you because I'm not going to show you what I get because it's really important that we all kind of come up with different answers for our line of best fit. So I already got a line right here that I've done but I'm not going to show it to you because I need you to do your own best line of fit. So let's talk through how you're going to do that instead of just watching me do it. So our first thing is we're going to draw the line of best fit, then use it to write an equation that models the relationship between the points scored during the season and minutes played. All right, so here's our data. So this is uh, your resource page. So hopefully you've printed that off as well. You've got to decide where that line of best fit is going to be. Now, let's look at our data here. So we can see that uh, they didn't put a break in the graph. So that's pretty cool. So anyways, we've got all these points down here. So these are the people that played lower minutes here. And they scored less points, of course, because that makes sense. And over here, we see that as we go down the graph, the more minutes that they played, the more variability there is in their points scored. So much so that this last person, you know, scores a ton of points, but also plays a ton of minutes. So this line's gonna be a little bit tough for you. Where does that where's that center gonna be? I mean, should the center just be, you know, covering these points down here? If so, maybe this would be a good line of center. Maybe you want to take into account over here that as we go over there, you know, maybe a line like this, you know, better explains where the center is. You're going to have to make that decision. What I would suggest to you is there's two different things you could do. You could find two points somewhere on here and say, okay, those are my two points for my line. And then I'm going to make it a, an equation from those two points. Or let's say that you think, you know what? I don't think there are any two points that would make a good line. So I'm just going to pick two lattice points that are going to make a good line. Lattice points are where the X's and Y's are crossing each other. So maybe you think that, oh, this lattice point here at 2,500, um, and then what would this be? 2,500, 900. Maybe that's going to be one of my lattice points. And then I'm going to do like 500, 300 or something like that. There's, there's your lattice points. Okay, so you, then you can make an equation from that. So I want you, on your own, to somehow make a best line of fit. Like I said, there's a couple ways you can do it. Find two points and make a line from those, uh, from the, the points that you've already been given. Or just find two of your own lattice points and say, okay, these are the two lattice points I want. What you really want to do, though, is make make a line that goes through the middle of the data. Now the middle of the data is hard on this one, I understand that, and we're all probably gonna get different equations, and that's what I want for this one. Because we've been talking about how this best line of fit is kind of a little tricky because what's the definition of best? You know, my best line might be different from your best line. Now there are certain things that all of our lines should have. This data is definitely increasing from left to right. So you shouldn't have a negative slope on your best line of fit because that would be crazy talk. All right, so you want something with a, a positive slope. Now, how steep is that slope? 
So these are the things that you're going to have to struggle with on your own. It's kind of going to be a little different. Okay, so I want you to have your best line. Okay, so let's look at our data that we have here. Most of our data yet hasn't had an outlier, but I think there definitely is an outlier on this one. If you look, this last person, uh, Scotty Swarden, he's just got way more points, well, more minutes, but also more points. You know, if, you, if he wasn't in here, best line of fit would probably be a little bit easier. We could definitely kind of go through here, and that'd be our middle. But we've got this guy throwing everything off, so maybe that's going to change our best line of fit a little bit too. So we have an outlier on there. Okay, so that is whose data point is that? That would be Scotty's warden. So which data point is the one that is an outlier? The data point that is 3,090 and 2,491 points. Oops, 91. And we know that that is uh, Scotty Swarden. All right, what's his residual? So residual for this, remember, is your actual minus your predicted. So we know his actual points is 2,491. We would usually call this Y1. And predicted, we sometimes call Y hat to show that that's the predicted output versus the actual output. Okay, and then this should give us our residual. Now, I don't know what your predicted is. Your predicted is going to be different from what I got. Well, what you're going to do is you're going to use the line of best fit that you found and plug in 3,090 minutes to see what your line of best fit predicts for Scotty Sorden. And then you'll just take the actual and subtract the predicted amount from it. All right, we got a question. Would a player be more proud of a negative or a positive residual? So I will do this. I'll pretend and make just some line in here. I'm just going to make a random line. There's my line of best fit. I kind of messed up at the end there. Don't, don't pay attention to this. It's not, there. it's not there. All right. So let's say that that was my line of best fit. So if I was looking at the residual, remember the residual is the difference from the actual. Here's Scotty Sorden up here. Here's his actual. And it's the difference between the actual way up here and the predicted way down here. So it looks like Scotty has a positive residual. Positive. Residual. I can't spell this morning, sorry. So he has a positive residual, and we ask ourselves, would the players be more proud of a negative or a positive residual? Let's see what we think these mean. A positive residual, in the case of Scotty Sorden, <clears throat> means that he scored more points than our line of best fit predicts. So he'd probably be proud of that, because he scored more points than what we predicted he should score. A negative residual would be like somewhere down here. So that would be like this person down here. And this person scores less points than what's predicted. So he wouldn't be as proud of that, right? So positive residual. Because they score more points. than the model predicts. Okay, so the next part is how many points, uh, predict how many points Antonio Kusik scored. 
So his minutes, so we know that his minutes are 2, 1, 0, 3, and we're going to plug in the y hat, their predicted value. So you're going to use your model. to predict the output. So this is your input. His minutes were 2,103. You're going to plug them into your model. Remember your model is y equals mx plus b. x is going to be time played. And y, in this case we're calling it y hat because that's the predicted amount. This is the predicted points. Not the actual points, that's the predicted points. These are the actual points over here. All right, so in class on Monday when we get back from the weekend, is we're going to start looking at this and go, okay, everybody's got all these different lines. Who's got the best line? And how do we define what's a better line than another one? Okay, because there's definitely some better lines out there than uh, the lines that maybe we have or somebody else, maybe our line's better than others. But how do we define what a best line is? Okay, so that gets us down to this last part for today. Uh, different people are going to come up with different models for the relationship between total points scored and minutes played. They're also going to have different estimates for the number of points scored by Antonio Kusik. So your prediction for his uh, points scored is going to be different from mine because we're probably going to come up with different equations. So we're going to get different points. So what would be the best prediction for him? Well, the best prediction would come from the best line. So what's the best line? So we will discuss in breakout groups, what do we think about when deciding where to put the best line of fit? So when we put a line out here, what kind of factors do you, you know, put into your consideration for this line? You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to try to accomplish when you make a best line of fit? That's your first question right there. What are you thinking about when you decide on a best line? All right, what makes one line better, a better model, than another line? And this you should think about the residuals. All right, so in terms of the residuals, what would make a better line than another line? Remember, the residuals is the difference between the actual minus predicted. So, you know, if we have a really good line, our residuals shouldn't be that high because our residuals are how far away we are from the line. So what I really want to accomplish here is how can I limit the amount of my residual? Because my residual is how far off I'm on that line. So think about that when you think about how you can tell which model would be better. Okay, next question is how can we numerically, so that's with numbers and math, describe how close the prediction made by the model is to a player's actual total points? So how can we show how close the prediction is to the actual points? It's the residuals. All right, then finally, why is thinking about absolute value and total distance from the line of best fit important? Okay, so remember we have positive and negative residuals. So this question is, why should we think of the residuals as absolute value numbers instead of positives and negatives? All right, so think through those. Come up with your own decisions, and we'll discuss this in class. And then we'll come around to next week with 4.1.4 day 2 and hopefully answer some of these questions and see if we can actually come up with a best line instead of multiple best lines of fit. So that's our job. All right, so 
Do this on your own, come up with your own best line, and then we'll come back on our next lesson and define what a real best line, and the real best line is going to be what's called a regression line. All right, that's all I got for you today. I know I didn't really do a lot of work for you, but you're going to do the work this time. All right, so see you later. Math hard. Be good.